We are back with another build guys. In this video we're going to turn this beautiful walnut into a jumbo walnut table with metal legs. Sit back and I hope you enjoy or learn something. This table is going to be nine and a half feet so we're going to start off by zipping off the excess just to kind of make it a little easier to manage and cut off any of them checks or cracks in the end. And I always like to get a couple extra boards just in case something goes wrong or if one of them boards has a big old knot you didn't notice. So these are the boards I decided were the best for the build and now we're just going to kind of go through them and figure out which sides look good and where to start milling this lumber down. I'm just kind of eyeballing these to figure out which side's going to take the least amount of work to get these flat and then just kind of go from there. Now the fun part begins, wrestling all this heavy lumber just to get two straight edges. We're just going to run this through the joiner a bunch of times to get one straight edge and one straight face. And then we'll go from there, milling the rest down to get it square. We actually had to move all of our tools around a little bit just to get that extra room since they don't really work with stuff typically this long. And then it's just rinse and repeat. Run it through a bunch of times to get a straight edge, flip it, get a straight face. And then we're going to head over to the table saw to cut off the excess of the opposite edge. And then this will give us two clean edges. And then luckily Evie was in that day to help me wrestle these things. As you can see, they're quite heavy. And then now that we have two straight edges and one flat side, we're going to get four straight edges with the planer. I ended up only milling these about 80% of the way. Then I let them rest a few days and finish the rest of the planing just to let them acclimate. And now after a dry fit, ensuring everything fits together how I'd like, we're going to add some dominoes just to help with alignment. There's no science or measuring here, these are just random lines just to help keep it flat. Dominoes, dowels, biscuits, they all work the same. And then if you've worked with a domino before, it can create quite a tight fit. So I like to do most of my fittings loose, then I'll just do only a few tight so you can actually get the piece together. Otherwise you can spend a lot of time just trying to get it together because they can fit so snug. And then when it comes to big glue ups like this, it just makes it so much easier to have two people. Just, it's way less stressful. And then we're going to glue this up into two panels. I have a 20 inch planer, so we're going to run both halves of the table through the planer. The table will be 36 inches wide, and if I didn't have a wide planer, I would have done it in three segments instead of two. And then once you have pressure on the table, I like to go through and check the clamp pressure because too much clamp pressure can really cup your table and throw it out of whack because if it's cupped in the clamps, it'll be cupped when you take it out. So just take the extra minute and just check for flatness. There's a lot of ways of dealing with glue. I prefer to wait 30, 40 minutes and then just scrape it off. And while I was there, I just filled any little small voids with epoxy. And now that this piece is out of the clamps, we're gonna do exactly the same thing to get the other panel without knocking the light off the ceiling. And then these were already milled most of the way. I'm just doing the final cleanup passes just to get them nice and square after they sat for a few days. And then it's exactly the same steps as before. And I always do a dry fit because you never know what happened or how your wood moved. And now onto the metal base. I have a welding background, so I kind of like to weld some stuff when I get the opportunity. And these pieces were on the bottom of the pile that were just on my floor, so they got a little rusty and needed a little extra love. But after just cleaning them up a bunch and wiping them down with some acetone, they cleaned up pretty well. And then to find all my angles, I use SketchUp, and then I just use a scrap piece of 2x4 to transfer those angles onto the metal, as you can't just trim metal as easy as 2x4, so I do a quick mock-up beforehand. And then just use the same 2x4 to set my blade angle and all that, and it's just less worrying when I'm actually cutting the metal. And just like that, we have four legs. And then I'm just making note of the metal seam and ensuring that that's on the inside as you do not want that visible on the outside of the leg. We are starting this build off with a fresh tank, and this is the welder I use. I got it for like 700 bucks used on the marketplace with the tank and all that. So you don't need anything crazy, and I have no affiliation with Hobart just showing my setup. It's just a simple Hobart Handler 190. And now to start off with some welding, we're just going to cap off these ends with an inch and a half flat stock, and then just grind it all smooth. 
And then my welding setup is relatively basic. I got this table on Marketplace for, it was like a couple hundred bucks and it just wasn't that flat. So that's kind of my biggest struggle. I don't have any fixtures or anything. So I'm just kind of making do with what I have. And then just constantly checking square as you weld and just jumping around so you don't plow too much heat in one area, especially without any fixtures. You just kind of want to take your time and just hop around and keep checking for straightness and square. We've been planning to move for a while, so once we actually move, I'll invest in a better workbench and table. As of now, I just have the welder, the cold cut saw, and then this semi-flat bench, which you can do quite a lot with. It's what I've been using for the past couple years now, but it'll be nice to finally have a nice flat weld table. And here I'm just lining up the flat stock so I know where not to put holes, because this is the, actually the part where it'll mount to the table. So I'm just making marks, I'll drill all my holes and slots, and then this will get welded on. And now I'm just ensuring that both pieces are relatively the same. I mean, they'll never be perfect, but as long as they're pretty close, no one will ever know. And now we're gonna move on to the next piece. And then the good old scrap wood template. This piece will jut out from the main cross beam and go to the middle of the table. And my saw wasn't able to make this steep a cut, so I had to use a cutoff wheel. You could do pretty much all this with the cutoff wheel. It's just, it's just a lot of work and not a very good time. And I actually threw a piece of melamine down because the, the table kind of has a bow to it. I was hoping the melamine would kind of take that out a little bit when I'm welding this on because I didn't want my table to be all wobbly. And then just kind of line it up the best I can. Again, if I had some sort of fixture or something to go off, it would be way easier, but we're making do with what we have. And it actually turns out pretty good. And here I'm just kind of just testing the layout, figuring out how everything's going to look. This is going to be a nine and a half foot table, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it and see what's going to look good. And now that I'm happy with how everything looks, we're just going to weld this thing solid. Also note how I tacked the piece to the table, so when I welded the back end of it, it went pull left or right. And that's pretty much it for welding, so now let's wrestle the rest of this tabletop together and just get this big thing through the planer and then just glue these two halves together. And being able to run these two chunks through the planer saved a ton of time in sanding, as they come out relatively smooth and flat already. And now that we have our two flat pieces, we just kind of lined it up to see which side looked best. And I did run these into the joiner, but I wasn't happy with the joint, so we did wrestle these things through the joiner one more time. And then the same as before, just a handful of dominoes to help with alignment. And then again, if you can, an extra set of hands with a glue up like this just makes it way less stressful. And then once we got it pulled together, I like to do a quick pressure check again, just to make sure everything's flat. I'm not using too much pressure or too little pressure. And then as you can see here, it does pull it a little flat as there was a little gap on the right side. It's hard to see in the video, but a little more pressure and it pulled it right flat. And then I just scrape the glue and clean it up with water just because I don't want to end up sanding any low spots in the table. You want it nice and smooth. And the less glue you have to sand, the better. Then this was left in the clamps the rest of the day and overnight before we even messed with it. Didn't want to stress any of the joints and I just filled any knots, voids, and whatever with this black epoxy. And then I never want to let a tabletop like this just rest flat on a surface. So we just prop it up with these 4x4 so it's not sitting on the surface. That's a great way to get your tabletop to cup. It could be out of the clamps flat, but if you don't take care of it, it will end up cupping or warping. And you can see here just the 4x4s underneath the table. Saw horses or anything would work, just I don't like setting it flat on a surface where it can't breathe. I then used a card scraper to remove any of the epoxy because you don't want to get any low spots. And then we just started sanding with 120 to get it nice and flat. And then after that, Evie kind of took over and sanded the rest of the table. And this has to be one of my favorite parts, zipping the edges off nice and square. I let Evie do the honors in this one, and we got a nice clean edge. And I don't even know how many times I flipped this table. This thing was heavy. And now we're going to get the bases lined up with the table, which involves staring at SketchUp, staring at the table, and just kind of measuring and seeing what looks right. And once we all agreed on what looked good, Evie got started on routering out the channels where the table base will sit so that flat stock doesn't sit above the surface. This step definitely isn't needed, I just think it looks way better and it probably took her like an hour or so. 
And then just more test fitting to make sure everything lines up. And then we did have to do a little cleanup passes, but everything fit together great. Then to attach the base, we just used this self-centering bit to mark the holes so that everything would line up correctly. And then we just used threaded inserts as you'll see later. And then Evie went ahead and did the final sanding to 150 and I just cleaned out the channels and got started prepping the base for paint. And then to do that, I just used an orbital sander with 80 grit to do the final blending and then just clean it about 400 times with acetone. And then if I can, I like to add these leveling feet. I add them to any furniture that I'm able to. And this is just a nut rivet and it just crimps in there like a rivet and it gives you a threaded option. Furniture is never perfect, let alone the customer's floors, so better safe than sorry, I don't want a rocky table or a piece of furniture in the house. And then I do paint these myself. Powder coating is definitely the best option, but I don't have one nearby and we live in the middle of nowhere, so I'm just gonna paint these. I do two coats of self-etching primer, and then any decent quality spray paint will be just fine. And if you're feeling real froggy, add a couple clear coats for extra protection. As long as you follow the directions on the can, you should be fine. Just don't lay it on too thick as it won't cure properly. Now that Evie has everything sanded, we're gonna go ahead and apply the finish. On this one, we're gonna use Osmo. It's quite similar to Rubio and other finishes I use. We've been using it on smaller items, but I really wanted to give it a try on this table. It's quite durable for like a wax type finish. And it's also a lot easier to repair if something does happen to it. Yeah. And we noticed there was a scratch, so I just used a card scraper to scrape back that fresh finish and then just kind of buff that scratch out. And then we just reapplied a little finish and the scratch was essentially gone. As, again, this is just, it's an easy finish to repair versus if it was sprayed, it'd be a little more work. And now we're just gonna plow a bunch of threaded inserts in there just so we can attach the table base with bolts so it has a nice firm hold. And then I can't remember if we did three or four coats. I believe we did three, but this is the this is the final coat we did, and you pretty much just wipe it on and wipe it off. It's quite easy to do. It's pretty much the same application as Rubio. You can just get multiple coats, and then you just make sure you get all the excess finish off, and you're pretty much good to go. It even has a decent sheen. And now that the table is done, we're gonna put it together just to kind of make sure everything fits together before we take it to the customer. So we're just double checking everything lines up along with all the bolts. There's like 20 bolts per leg. So it's just gotta make sure everything fits cause you don't want any problems when you get it to the customer's house. And then it's just, we flipped it up to take pictures of it just in case the customer's house isn't picture friendly. And then since it's been sitting in our dusty shop for the past couple weeks, we just give it a good cleaning to make sure any dust or debris off of it before we wrap it up. And just thought this would be a good thumbnail. Unfortunately, it didn't make the cut. Now let's wrap this thing up and get it delivered to the customer's house. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Table builds aren't exactly the funnest thing to build, or at least video-wise. So I hope you guys enjoyed and hope you all have a wonderful day.